In breaking news this morning, Nirvana lead singer Kurt Cobain has been taken to a local hospital after a suspected drug overdose. Reports state that the singer is still alive and shows every chance of recovering. Cobain was brought to the hospital after private investigator Tom Grant and a friend of Cobain's found the Nirvana lead singer lying unresponsive in a small room on the property, reports state. Cobain was rushed to a nearby hospital and is now in recovery. This news comes out today following up from only around one month ago when Cobain was rushed to a hospital in Rome under similar circumstances. We are on the line with Kurt Cobain, his first interview since the, well, major scare we had back in April of this year. Kurt, how you doing? Yeah, I'm doing good, thanks. Very good, thank you. Kurt, you gave us all a bit of a scare back there around six months ago, back in April. How are things for you now? Oh, things are much better, yeah. The media, a lot of that was really blown out of proportion. People have said it in all the news articles. Oh, Cobain tried to take his life. You know, it wasn't that. You know, I would never do that. Uh, it was just an accident. It really was. I mean, not to get too personal, Kurt, but the reports going around at the time that you did try to end your own life that day. Well, as I said, I've got a baby daughter who I want to stay around for many years yet, you know, so... I'm not about to go and leave this planet anytime soon. I want to be here for the rest of her life, you know. You know, I can't really remember a lot about that day. They had this big intervention for me. I had to go up to L.A. and to Exodus, you know, into that recovery center. I escaped there. Everybody knows that. Went back to Seattle. Courtney, my wife, she had a private investigator looking for me, trying to track me down. And I don't know, it all just got too much, and I guess I made some mistakes, but I never meant to do that. I'm not going to go into it all now, into all the details, I'm not going to do that. But yeah, it was all one horrible mistake. But I'm back now, and things are good, and I'm ready to go on. Well, Kurt, that is very good to hear. We're all very pleased to hear that, your fans out there. And I guess the first question everybody wants to know now is, is Nirvana still a thing? Are you guys going to release any more music? What's the story on that front? Well, you know, it's been a pretty tough six months with everything that's gone on, of course. And right now the band is on hiatus. I'm just going to take some time off. You know, things have just gotten way too hectic and way too big for this band right now. So I'm going to do what I should have done a few months back probably, and that's just take some time off from Nirvana. Dave's apparently going to be releasing some new music soon. He's been showing me some of the stuff he's been working on. He's got this band coming out, something or other, Fighters or something. So you hear from that probably in the next year or so. But as for Nirvana, we're taking a break for now, but we'll be back. We'll be back sometime, yeah. Welcome in, everybody, today on this October 4th, 1996. We have an exclusive interview today with grunge star Kurt Cobain, who has not conducted an interview for around two years now, but is talking with us today. Kurt, we've got you on the line. Great to talk to you. Hey, good to talk to you, too. Kurt, a lot has gone on in your life since you have last spoken to the public. 
You have just recently got divorced from your wife of over four and a half years, I believe. Do you want to talk about that at all? Well, not really. It's kind of sad that things went that way between us, but, I mean, me and Courtney still remain good friends, you know, but we just thought it would be best for Francis. You know, we were just going to take a break initially, but as I say, we're still on good terms, so... In some ways, it was a long time coming, but, you know, I don't really want to go into all that personal stuff here today. That is fair enough, Kurt. We can respect that. But the big news that we want to talk to you about today is the release of your solo album, Baby I Love You. Yeah. Tell us about that name, Kurt. I mean, that's got to be named after your daughter, right, Frances Bean? How old is she now? side of things is working out pretty good so far, so... But yeah, Frances is great. She's a light of my life. She really is. And the album, 10 Tracks, I believe. Your first solo record. How come you are doing this, Kurt, at this time? Is Nirvana over? What's going on there? No, no, Nirvana is not over. I believed I said one time, not too long ago, the band were just on hiatus, and we still are. We will be back, believe that. We've got some more music left in us yet. Um, Things are kind of tied up as well. I mean, Dave's doing his own thing. You know, we've all seen the success of his first Foo Fighters record he released last year. I mean, he's doing real good. And he seems to really be enjoying that, touring and stuff, so... Yeah, tell us about that. Was that kind of a surprise to see Dave Grohl release his own album? Well, not a surprise for me or Chris or anybody who know him. I mean, the guy can not only drum, he's like a killer drummer. You know, he can write songs, play the guitar, he, you know, he sings. You've all seen that by now. And, you know, I mean, I love that first record that they've put out. And they're working on another one, too, now, so... So, does this mean you have to find a new drummer, Kurt, to carry on with Nirvana? No, no, no. Dave's, Dave's doing his thing for now, and that's cool. I'm doing my thing with my solo record, so... No, it's, you know, it's all gonna work out, so... Watch this space. <laughs> and back to that solo record, Kurt, what we really want to talk to you about here today called Baby I Love You, and Kurt, we believe today you're going to play us some of the material from that record here over the phone. Yeah, if, if you want. I mean, I can. Oh, that'd be great, Kurt. Lay it on us. Lay some of that new music on us. Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll do that. I'll just grab my guitar. Get it all set up here. Uh, this is from the title track on the album. I never really liked to release music like, af have the album name, like, after a song on the record. We never did that with Nirvana. I like having, like, a separate name, but for this time around, I thought I would do that. So this is from the song, Baby, I Love You. I hope you can hear it. Oh, we'll let you know, Kurt. Take it away.
That's just part of the song anyway. Hopefully you could hear that okay. Probably didn't come across so good on the telephone, but... Yes, no, we heard that. That's the first single from the album. We've heard that on the radio a couple of times, of course. Yeah, it's brand new. I mean, maybe, you know, maybe next time it should come into the studio or something like that. It'd probably sound like a hundred times better. <laughs> so you're still continuing on with that grunge sound, Kurt? You had said in earlier interviews a few years back that you might like to go away from that grunge sound at some point. Yeah, well, that's what we're going to do, you know, when Nirvana gets back together and I do see that happening when we go into the studio to record like a fourth, you know, studio album, a follow-up to In Utero, if you will, a late follow-up. Um, you know, that's what we're going to do. We're really going to toy around with some different ideas and mix all sorts of stuff together and come up with something totally not grunge, you know. I mean, I I see grunge is still out there, you know. You got bands like Bush. You know, that 16 Stone record they released, you know, was very good. Yeah, I wanted to talk to you about that. What do you think about those other grunge bands out there, such as Bush and bands like Silverchair and... Other bands that are clearly influenced by the Nirvana sound, you would have to say, right? Yeah, I would say they would be influenced by us. I mean, you know, that sort of comes across pretty clearly, I would think. You know, I'm not saying these bands like Bush and all these other bands are trying to rip us off. But, you know, I don't hate it. You know, it's still, you know, good rock music. It's good to see that kind of music, you know, didn't go away, you know, just because Nirvana stopped or whatever, it's still getting out there. But I think the face of music is, you know, definitely starting to change. That whole grunge movement, you know, seems to be over. You know, the Alice in Chains and Sound Gardens of this world, you know, those types of bands, you know, seem to be kind of slowly falling apart now, although... You know, I did watch that Unplugged Alice in Chains show, and I thought that was absolutely amazing. You know, I was there in the audience that night and watched it firsthand, and I thought that was an amazing show. Because you guys, of course, did your legendary Unplugged show back in 93. I mean, that was amazing in itself. Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, no, that was that was a really good time for us, you know, creatively. We really wanted to do something different, and it was... Um, yeah, it was amazing to see the Alice in Chains show. I thought, you know, their show was awesome. Very awesome. So we've talked about Dave already with his new music with the Foo Fighters. What's Chris up to these days, the bass player? Oh, Chris, yeah. You know, he's kind of taken some time off music. Um, you know, we're still all great friends, actually, you know, Dave, Chris, and I, you know, we all still hang out. But yeah, no, um, he's doing good. He, he might have, uh, he was working, jamming with some band the other day. Um, he might have something coming out. You'd probably have to talk to him about that. But yeah, we've all got Nirvana on our minds, um, you know, in the future. Not right now, but, you know, we're going to be going back to that at some at some point, yeah. Well, that's very good to hear, Kurt. Thank you so much for sharing that music with us today. Your debut solo record is out now, Baby I Love You. That song has been playing on the radio. Everybody's been hearing it. want everybody to go out and buy that record today. Pick it up on CD or cassette. Go out and get it. Thanks again, Kurt, and glad to hear that things are going well for you.
We are on the line with Kurt Cobain today with a massive reveal. Kurt will be talking about the fourth Nirvana studio album. But just before all that, I want to address these rumors, Kurt. Is it true that you and former whole bassist Kristen Pfaff are an item? Is what we're reading out there true? <laughs> well, I don't know if I should say. Let's just say we're good friends. Kristen Pfaff almost dying of an overdose herself back in June of 1994. And Kurt, I believe you saved Kristen's life that day. Well, that's great to hear, Kurt. We'll see if anything further develops there. But now, here we are in November of 2001, of course. Your album, the fourth Nirvana album, it is self-titled, just simply Nirvana. Of course, was scheduled for release back in September of 2001, but of course, we had those horrible attacks, those terrorist attacks on New York, and your album had to be held back, and you're deciding to release it now in November. Can you tell us about that whole time and what that was like? Yeah, well, we originally wanted to release it in September. Um, that was like eight years to the day that we had released our last studio album, In Utero. We released that back in September of 93. So we thought it would be pretty cool to have a September release for this record, too, but, but there was just no way we were going to release it, you know, after those terrible attacks that happened to New York. Um, you know, we were going to delay it, you know, you know, even longer, but um, we just decided it had been long enough, so we're releasing it now. Hopefully some uplifting music and some uh, really trying times uh, for the United States and the whole world right now with, uh, with what went down there, yeah. Well, that's very awesome, Kurt. Can you tell us about the album, some of the songs on the album? song we put out and that seems to be doing real well you know it's not your typical grunge album you know we have some of that on there but we also experimented with some new sounds you know music has changed so much since we put out our last album I mean look at Metallica I mean you know with Load and Reload I mean they weren't afraid to change you know and Neither are we, you know, it's not a bad thing to go in a different direction. An album like OK Computer from Radiohead, I mean, how awesome was that, right? You know, I think you have to be, you know, not afraid to push the boundaries, you know, and develop and grow as a band. But, you know, as I say, the music scene has changed so much, you know, you got new metal out there right now, you have bands like Creed and Limp Bizkit you know, really popular bands, and we're aware of that. Not that we're just trying to fit into any trends or fit into the current music scene or whatever, you know. I mean, it's still Nirvana. We're still doing our own thing. But it is something different, yeah, and we're really pleased with it, so. There was even a collaboration with R.E.M. lead singer Michael Stipe on the album, Kurt. Tell us about that. got him to sing backing vocals on one of the tracks, and it turned out really good. We had been meaning to do something for so many years now, and it was just great to finally do something. And of course, you had done something similar on Dave's second Foo Fighters album, The Color and the Shape, where you collaborated with Dave on a couple of the songs on that album. And you've got a big world tour coming up behind this album, Kurt. Uh, we wish you all the best for that. The new album sounds great. The new single sounds awesome. And good luck for your future. Yeah, thanks so much. We're really looking forward to 
to this tour, the first time we've toured in, like, since early 94, but we're back, and we're really looking forward to this one, and yeah, it's, it's gonna be a blast.